Hello, I am Dr. Sridhar and uh, welcome to my channel. If you have not already subscribed, I request you to subscribe and also to follow the notifications so that you know when new videos are released. In this short video, I will be discussing natal teeth. So, uh, natal teeth are nothing but teeth that are present at birth and sometimes they do erupt in the newborn period in the first 30 days when we call them neonatal teeth. And uh, these are examples, uh, some babies are born with teeth like this, usually in the lower incisor region and uh, this is an x-ray showing the actual teeth. So the natal teeth are more common than neonatal but even, uh, uh, even though uh, relatively more common than neonatal, the incidence is not very common and it's about 1 in 2,000 to 1 in 10,000. There are some babies where we see just prominence of the gums but no actual teeth and that may not be classified in this category. Uh, we can just put it as uh, gum prominence. Uh, most of the time it uh, reflects uh, premature eruption of the regular teeth which is the milk teeth. In only a small number of babies it's supernumerary so when it is there and you want to remove it, it's actually from the milk teeth itself. So only remove it if it's needed. Majority of the cases is the lower central incisor and the upper central incisor is involved in 10% and other teeth are only rarely involved. I have seen only those involving the incisors. We can have a mature stable tooth but most of the time these are not fully developed and uh, it's weak and the root is not well developed. So the tooth is shaking. Uh, that's one of the commonest reasons that we need to remove these because if the loose tooth uh, goes into the mouth, the baby may choke on the teeth. The enamel is often thin and is brownish or yellow and uh, there are four patterns. Uh, we can have thin uh, crown which is poorly fixed, we can have a normal crown which is poorly attached and uh, we may just have the incisal margin erupted. So these might evolve into more normal teeth because it's partly erupted and it continues erupting with time or you may just have swelling of the gums with unerupted but palpable tooth. So it's usually caused by a superficial position of the tooth germ and it can be hereditary. There may be associated syndromes with some of these. Uh, Ellis Van Crevel is the commonest uh, syndrome associated though it's very rare. It's uh, chondroectodermal dysplasia where we have a narrow chest wall and the natal teeth as, as well. Soto syndrome is a form of gigantism and we have hallermann streiff syndrome, Pierre Robin, Rubinstein Tybee and others. But in majority of the cases, these babies just have the natal teeth with no other association and you don't need to worry. If the tooth is normally developed, the prognosis is good and you can maintain it like regular teeth. Uh, you may start cleaning the teeth. Uh, the treatment is indicated if it's a poorly developed tooth with a high risk of uh, detachment and aspiration. So sometimes these have sharp edges as the enamel or crown is <coughs> poorly formed and it may interfere with feeding. Uh, there can be ulceration of the ventral side of the tongue when it is called Riga feed disease and the mother's nipple can get ulcerated from the sharp edge of the tooth as well. So smoothing the sharp edge as a temporizing measure is an option where the sharpness is a problem but the tooth is stable and uh, sometimes this can be associated with soft tissue growth <coughs> like a nipple is over the gums. It's better treated by a pediatric dentist as remnants of the dental papillae and the root sheath could create issues later. So remember that if there are remnants, it could interfere with the next erupting teeth as well. Uh, we also need to monitor alignment of the rest of the teeth when they erupt. Uh, this is just a short summary. I hope this is useful. Thank you.